On this video, I'm going to focus on showing you the menu and all of the settings and what personal settings I use when running this dash cam. And as always, I'd like to remind you that I have placed a link to this dash cam in the description down below if you want to look at it further or acquire one for yourself. On the bottom of the dash cam, we have a power button that turns off the screen and allows the dash cam to still record in the background if you want to use this as a regular mirror. First off, we can adjust the view by sliding our finger up and down on the left hand side of the screen and if we do the same process on the right hand side that adjusts the brightness level. Now to play back the previously recorded videos all I have to do is swipe from left to right and that's going to take me to the playback screen. In the playback screen I can select any of the previously recorded videos and as you can see they are organized in different folders so I can look at the front or rear videos or front or rear pictures. To go back to the main menu I press on this little icon right here and that returns the dash cam to its normal recording position. And we know to change the view of the dash cam we can just swipe from right to left and that changes to a split screen swipe one more time front screen swipe one more time and that's the rear screen and on the bottom of the dash cam we have several icons and we'll start from the left hand side this icon that looks like a microphone allows us to temporarily mute the recording of audio if we wanted to have a top secret conversation we can resume audio recording by pressing that microphone one more time the next icon is going to be a camera icon pressing that little icon is going to take a picture if we want us to refer to that later. Then we have the icon in the middle for starting the recording or stopping the recording. Notice that we are recording. If I press this, we are no longer recording. Pressing that icon again resumes the recording. Then we have the settings icon, which we're going to skip right now. And then we have a little lock icon. The lock icon allows us to flag the current video so we can find that a lot easier in the future. Remember, this is recording many hours of video and flagging a specific section of video will allow us to find and retrieve that video later. Now let's go over to the settings by pressing the little gear icon. And the very first setting is going to be loop recording. All dash cams record in loop recording, which means that they segment the video into small manageable chunks and here you can select how big those chunks are one minute three minutes or five minutes there's no right or wrong selection on here however i like to have mine in three minutes i think that's a nice in between the next option is going to be time lapse instead of recording in normal real time we can select to have the picture taken every one second, every two seconds, or every three seconds, creating a time lapse, a compressed video of many hours of footage recorded. The next icon is the audio, and this allows us to turn off whether we want the audio to be recorded or not recorded. I always have the audio on. I think it's important to have that. We can always get rid of it later if we don't need it. And the next option is driving mode. Now this controls the G sensor of this dash cam, which allows this dash cam to sense when we get into a car crash and automatically flag that video so we can find that later and this controls it when we are driving so if I set this too high any little bump on the road might trigger the dash cam and think I got into a car crash so that might create too many false alerts I normally run the G sensor in low for the driving mode but again experiment with your car because this can vary from vehicle to vehicle the parking mode is very similar this also controls the G sensor but when the vehicle is parked if I set this to too high then any little loud sound perhaps a car with a loud exhaust pass by can trigger the dash cam into thinking that somebody hit the car when it is parked so just like the driving mode earlier I also run this on low to reduce the number of false alerts and then we have the license mode option this allows us to enter our license plate or some other custom message and that is going to appear on the video that is being recorded then we have the sleep mode this allows the screen to turn off after a certain period of time while still recording and that is an option that is available if you do not want to use this mirror as a LCD mirror if you want to use this as a normal standard mirror I always leave mine on off because I want my screen to stay on all the time but what about this encode option well this controls the codec that is being used to record the video now what does that mean well H265 is used by newer computers and newer phones to play back the video if I don't have a newer computer or newer phone I can default this to H64 which is compatible with all their computers and all their phones. Now H264 has really good quality but it creates larger file sizes. Running this dash cam in H265 will allow the file sizes to be smaller and still of good quality. Now let's go over to frequency. In frequency we can change that between 60 Hz 
and 50 hertz. Now you want to have that in 50 if you're in Europe and if you're in the United States you want to have that in 60 hertz. What that does it reduces any kind of flickering of any lights that you may be potentially recording. Now USB mode you're not really going to use this very often. This is only if you take the entire dash cam off and connect that to the PC to download the videos. I think most people are going to remove the memory card rather than remove the entire dash cam but if you wanted to remove the dash cam and connect it to your computer you could do that with the USB mode. Then we have the tap sound. Now if you turn on the tap sound what you get is this annoying sound. Sounds like an old school phone. I get very annoyed with that sound so I always turn that tap sound off. Then we have the speaker volume option and this controls the volume of the videos that are being played back. I'll put that in high. Next we have the on off sound. This dash cam will make a welcome sound when you turn down the car. However, if that sound gets boring or you don't want to have that sound come on every time you turn on the vehicle, you can turn that off which is my preferred setting. And the next option is going to be streaming media. And if if I turn that on, every time the dash cam turns on, it's going to show me the rear view. If I turn this option off, I'm going to get a split view, which is the front at the rear. Since I use this dash cam primarily as a digital mirror, I like to have the setting on all the time so it always displays the rear view by default. Next is going to be languages and we have several from here to choose from. I'm going to leave mine on English. In the date and time option, we can manually enter a date or a time. However, most of the time I never go in here because this information is set automatically by the GPS antenna but you could change that manually if you wanted to. And then we have the format option. This allows us to blank out the entire memory card in one shot if we wanted to delete all evidence. It is also recommended to format a brand new memory card that has just been installed using this function. And moving over to the last settings of the dash cam, we have a factory reset option. If for some reason we change something in this dash cam and we don't know how to return it back to its normal settings, we can restore all the settings with this option in one shot. The next option is speech recognition and that allows this dash cam to respond to voice commands and they're all listed on here. However, if somebody on the radio happens to say one of these voice commands or somebody in your car wants to play a joke on you and say one of these voice commands, they might accidentally make the camera react to it. So most of the time I turn that setting off. Then we have a version option that allows us to see the current firmware or current software that we're currently running on this dash cam. On the GPS test icon we don't have to change anything on there. This just allows us to confirm that the GPS is working. Here is the time zone. If you're finding that the dash cam has the incorrect time and you keep changing it but the time keeps going incorrect again, is because we have not told the dash cam where we are located. It is important to tell it exactly where we're at, that way it can pull the correct time and correct date from the GPS. And the next option is gonna be speed calibration. We know that this dash cam has the ability to track our speed, but if we find that the GPS setting is slightly off, we can adjust and compensate for that. If we want the speedometer to look a little bit faster, we can increase that, or if we want the speedometer to look a little bit slower, we can decrease that. Most of the time I find that the GPS is fairly accurate so I put that at zero. And finally we can change the speed unit to kilometers per hour and if I tap that one more time back to miles per hour. So now that you know how to use this dash cam to its full potential make sure to hit the like button to support the channel and if you have any other comments regarding any of the menu items that I show you please put that in the comments down below. Remember I placed a link to this dash cam in the description also if you want to check it out further and stay tuned as I have a lot more dash cam reviews coming up. Thank you guys for watching and as always I'll see you on the next one.